Most students waste their valuable energy on time-consuming tasks and distractions that drain them of their focus and stamina. They get stuck in passive and ineffective study routines, never reaching deeper learning. Notebook LM shifts that. It cuts through all the busy work so students can really start to focus on understanding the content. It actually empowers struggling learners to reframe and reprocess difficult content in a way that works for them, especially when classroom instruction does not match their processing style. I'm Dr. Erica Warren. I'm an educational therapist, executive functioning coach, and I have a course called Executive Functioning Coaching and Study Strategies Certification Course. In this video, I will show you how you can use Notebook LM to improve a student's executive functioning skills, develop a personalized learning approach, and develop the tips and tools and strategies so that they can be more effective learners. So let me give you a little demonstration of how this works. We just type in Notebook LM into Google. We go down here to Notebook LM. If you already have a Google account of any kind, you just have to hit Try Notebook LM and it will automatically create this. I created a couple notebooks, which is what they call them, so I could show you a demonstration. So let's look at Ancient Egypt. So here I have already uploaded a few documents and let me show you how this works. If you hit add, you can actually upload anything from Google Drive, from Google Docs, from Google Slides. So if your teacher gives you slides, if they give you Google Slides, you can upload Google Slides. If they give you PowerPoint presentations, all you have to do is save it as a PDF and then you can upload it as a PDF. You literally just drag and drop it right into the middle here and it will take any PDF. You can also um, add links to a website. So if there's a website that you wanna use as a resource, you simply click here, add the URL, and it will add it to the list. Um, other ones, YouTube. If you add a YouTube URL, again, it will transcribe it and also give you the video as well as a resource. And then if, if you simply want to paste text, so it could be your own notes. It could be that you have a document that you don't have as a PDF, but you have the actual text. You can simply copy and paste it in here. So you simply go here and paste it. I can paste whole books. So what's remarkable about Notebook LM is it can hold an enormous amount of information, which is unlike a lot of the other AI services that have a limited amount of content that you can give it. So now that I have just these three resources that I have already uploaded, what you can do is you can generate all sorts of cool things like mind maps. If you select this button, it will create a mind map, which I've already created for you at the bottom. If you select study guide, it will create a study guide for you, which is right here. If you select FAQ, it will give you frequently asked questions. If you select a briefing document, it will give you a briefing document. And if you hit timeline, it will actually give you a timeline of the information. One other thing you can do is you can listen to a podcast. Here I've already created a podcast. So let's go ahead and, and reload it. It's probably going to just take a few minutes. And while that's happening, let's look through some of the other documents that I've created. Here we have uh, a mind map, which we got from pressing on the button mind map. And let me show you what that looks like. This actually gives you all sorts of information in a way that allows students to see the big picture and to do deep dives into whatever content they're interested in. So if they want to go deeper into the geography, Now, if you click on this, you can see it doesn't open up into something new, but what it will do is it pulls it to the side and then it will give you greater information, but in more detail in paragraph form. So it's really quite remarkable what you can do with that resource. And it allows you to do those deep dives and it also allows you to see the big picture if that's the way that you process like many simultaneous processors do. And here we've got uh, 
the FAQ. So if we open that up, it gives you some frequently asked questions about ancient Egypt with the questions and the answers already there and provided for you. And they give you eight of them. You can also, if we go back here, we also, here's a study guide. If you click on study guide, it offers you a 10 question quiz with an answer key. It also offers you an essay format of questions and it offers a glossary of terms. Amazing, right? Now, if we go back, we can also, looks like I uploaded this twice, so we'll just open it once. This is a timeline. So it offers a timeline. So for those are the, that are sequential processors and really like to see the sequence, you know, something that comes before is usually a cause and all the things that come after tend to be an effect. So if that's the way you process and that's the way you think about things, being able to use the timeline is a really wonderful way of, of reprocessing the information in a way that helps you. And then at the bottom of this, they also offer the cast of characters. So it just organizes it in, in such a beautiful way. If you want to go in and be able to just understand the cast of characters in more depth, here it is. And uh, last but not least, let's go ahead and listen to the podcast. These podcasts are amazing. The voice quality is excellent. It sounds like a real person. It sounds like two people riffing. They even, they even put in the ums and the ahs to make it sound completely real. And uh, what you can do is you can generate a podcast on whatever you choose. And I'll show you that after we listen to this. If you create it initially, it asks you if you want to customize the, the podcast. And I actually said in my customization, I said, I want you to help me to study for this test. And so this is what they created. Welcome you. Let's get straight to it. You've got that ancient Egypt test coming up and we're here to help you absolutely nail it. Yeah, think of this as your uh, focus study session. We've pulled together some key stuff Exactly. We're drawing from the book Ancient Egypt, some really useful lecture notes, and also highlights from that YouTube doc, The Entire History of Ancient Egyptian Civilization with Joanne Fletcher. A good mix of sources. Our mission today, pull out the really crucial info you need, make it clear, make it stick, so you walk into that test feeling, you know, confident. That's the plan. We're diving into these sources to get you that core knowledge, that interconnected understanding of ancient Egypt. Perfect for the test. Okay, awesome. So where do we even begin with ancient Egypt? I guess the land itself, geography. Definitely, you have to start with the geography and that means starting with the Nile. It's like impossible to overstate its importance. Right, we all know it's important, but the scale is just, wow. Mm -hmm. Longest river in the world, right? Over 4,000 miles. 4,100 miles, yeah, staggering. Mm -hmm. And it basically dictated everything. Sources really point out a few key features you should know. So as you can see, it really goes into a lot of detail. It's a very conversational tone. It's not intimidating. But know that when you customize, you can make it whatever you want. If you feel like their discussion is too complicated, you can have them simplify the language. You can say, teach it to me as if I'm a third grader. But by customizing it, you can have them focus the discussion on whatever you want. You could just focus on the pyramids. You could just focus on the artwork or the architecture, whatever you choose. Perhaps your teacher wants you to write an essay using this content. It, you could have them podcast about that, which would help you to really process and to think about how to approach that, that essay. And the, the coolest thing is they have this interactive mode. Notice this, so if I hit the, the beta button, and then I'm gonna hit Welcome join. Let's get oh wait, someone wants to join. Hey, go for it. Hi, um, I have a quick question for you. I wanted to know, how did they use papyrus in ancient Egypt? Oh, hi there, great question. Yes, that's a really important point. Actually, we were just about to get into that. Papyrus was absolutely fundamental to ancient Egyptian life. Yeah, it's amazing when you think about it. They took these reeds. Directly from the Nile River, the papyrus plant itself. And then they had this really ingenious process. They'd harvest the stalks and then carefully prepare them. They'd peel off the outer layers, right? Exactly. And then the inner part, the pith, was cut into thin strips. And these strips were then layered. 
crisscrossed on top of each other, like a woven mat. Then they pressed them together. The natural sugars in the plant acted almost like a glue. A natural adhesive. That's so clever. Once dried, these sheets became their writing surface. And so you can see that you can actually interact with the podcasters, which makes it an interactive way of processing. So if you just need to think out loud, you have questions, you have choices, you can type your questions here and then it will give you a written format, or you can ask your questions within the podcast. Now, if you want to generate a new podcast, because say you're like, okay, I listened to this one, but I want a new one. You simply go to the three dots, hit delete, delete that podcast. Now you can customize a new one. Tell me more about their religious beliefs. Now when I hit generate, it's going to actually change the podcast and it will focus primarily on that particular topic. So you can see how you can do so many dynamic things with this and it enables students to reprocess information so if they don't understand it well, they can go in much more depth. So I also saved another notebook for you. This one is looking at a comparison of The Great Gatsby to, to Killing Mockingbird. And what you can do again is you add the sources. In this case, I found PDFs and I uploaded them. They didn't take, so I copied the text and I just pasted it in here. And then once I pasted it in, I was able to rename the source and I renamed them to The Great Gatsby and to Kill a Mockingbird. And now I have those two resources available to me. Again, I did the same thing where I was able to create mind maps study guides, FAQs, briefing documents, timelines. So you can do this in, with so many different types of projects, whether you're comparing The Great Gatsby to To Kill a Mockingbird in an essay or whether you have a test on it, you can do that. Whether And we already talked about ancient Egypt where you, if you have a, perhaps a midterm coming up on some content, perhaps you're having to do a research essay, you can drop all the research over here on the left hand side and then you can ask it questions like can you find me all the information that i want to put in body one perhaps body one is about the habitat of otters and so by asking it to find all the information about the habitat it will pull all that information out of the documents and will let you know what documents they're in but anytime you want to go back to any of the documents, you, and it gives you access to the full document. So even when we're over in ancient Egypt, it's the same thing. You see here, this, it's funny how that one just kind of opened. But if you go back to this, all the sources, you simply click on the source, and there's one of the sources that it, that it offered. But you can, you can actually pan through it and look at all the slides if you, if you choose to. Or look back through your lecture notes or look at this. This is, this is actually a, a YouTube video and it transcribed the whole video. So isn't that just an amazing way of being able to organize your content, keep all of your units together and organize? You can add your own notes to this and that can also become a resource. So, you know, whether you're doing a research paper, whether you're studying for tests, whether you're, you just don't understand a class very well and you're struggling with the textbook, you can put all of this information here. You can, you can have it simplified by listening to a podcast. You can do analytics. You can find things really quickly. So, you know, if you're trying to find something in the book, you always have that command or control F feature, which enables you to find a word in a book. So sometimes you can find something, but if you need to find an idea that doesn't work, but notebook LM does. So if I need to find anything in this resource, like, um, find information about the, the Sphinx, I just simply type that in. And here it actually had some information across these resources. And I simply just have to click here and it takes me back to the original source of where it was actually talking about that content. 
And as you see, if I click there, then it highlights it over here. So it's just a wonderful way of processing, reprocessing, keeping all of your resources organized in these sweet little notebooks. Anyway, I hope you loved this demonstration. I am completely in love with this, and I really feel like it is leveling the playing field for the neurodiverse. I hope you loved the content. Please like and share the video, and also subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to learn more about my executive functioning course, you can find out more about it in the show notes. Thanks so much. Bye.